Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to talk about a couple of advanced options when using ng-model. We're going to talk about the ng-model change event and we're going to talk about ng-model options. Let's start first with ng-model change. So what is the ng-model change event? This is an event emitted by any field to which the ng-model directive is applied to. So if you remember, whenever we are typing here on our input box, ng-model is keeping track of the value of the input and it's making that value available to the ng-form directive. Let's see that again in action. We are going to print out here to our screen the value, for example, of the email field. So the email field is being accessed here via the export of the ng-model directive applied to it. So we can take this template reference and we can access it here. So instead of printing out the errors of the email, let's print out its value. Let's now switch to a larger window and let's start typing here, for example, on the email field. And notice that the initial value of the email field is empty as expected. And as we type into the email field, we can see that the value of the expression that we see here is getting printed out at the same time. So every time that we type in here a new character, that is going to get reflected here in this template expression. As we know, it's the Angular ng model directive that is keeping track here of the value and filling in the value property that we are printing out here to the screen. Now, what if we would like to get notified in our component code each time that a new value is available here for the email field? That is precisely where the ng model change event comes in. So going back here to our workspace, let's subscribe to any changes into the value here of the email field by using the ng model change event. So whenever this event gets triggered, we are going to call here a new method. We're going to call it on email change and we're going to pass in the value emitted by the event. Let's go ahead and let's create this method here in our login component. And if you are using WebStorm, you can quickly create the new method using Alt Enter. So now we have here the change event. Let's go ahead and let's rename it. And let's print out here to the console the value that we are receiving. So we're going to do here a console log of the change event. Let's now go ahead and see this in action. Switching here to a larger window, we're going to start typing here on the email field. And as we can see, as expected, each time that we type in a new character, not only do we see here the value printed out via this template expression, but also every new value is getting printed out to the console due to the use of the ng model change event. The way that this works is every time that there is a new value, ng model is going to update both the validity state and the value of the email field and ng model is also going to notify the ng form directive that a new value for one of the form properties is available. In this case, ng model is going to notify ng form that there is a new value for the email property. As we can see, there are a lot of events going on, one per each key pressed. So these are a lot of events and sometimes this might even be counterproductive. Imagine that for certain fields, we only want to trigger a new value and a new validity state whenever we tab away and blur the field. For example, maybe we want to check if the email is already being used by another user. So for that, we would need a backend call. We would not want to emit a new value to the form every time that we type here one key. We would prefer instead to wait until all the field is filled in and only then when the user tabs away to another field would we then emit here a new event. We can control exactly when the ng model directive is going to emit a new value for its field. So going back here to our program we can use here next to ng model the ng model options property. 
So this is an input property of the ng model directive applied here to this form. This is going to take in a JavaScript configuration object that takes in several possible properties. In our case, we want to use the update on property. And in our example, we want to set this value to blur. So here, the ng model directive is only going to emit a new value if the field is blurred. Let's see this in action. We're going to switch here to a new window and let's go ahead and let's start typing in on the email field. Notice that neither the email.value expression nor the console is being used to log new values for the email field. And this is because we are waiting for the user to finish interaction with the form field and tab away from it or click elsewhere on the page in order to emit the event. So this is what happens when we use ng-model options with update on blur. New values are only going to get emitted via ng-model if we blur the field, meaning we tab away from it. By default, the value of value on is set to change. So ng-model is going to emit a new value each time that the field value changes. Let's see what this looks like. So we are going to switch here to a larger window and we're going to start typing again on the email field. As we can see, just like before, we are emitting a new change event each time that we enter a new character. So this is the default behavior. So we don't need to specify this to update on change. This is already on by default for all input fields. What other options do we have for update on? We can also set it to submit. So whenever we use this option, the value of this email field is only going to get set whenever we submit the whole form. Let's have a look at this in action. So now whenever we start typing in here on the email field, we are going to see that when we tab away from it, there is still no value emitted here for the email field. We will also notice that whenever we type in here a value on the password, the login button never gets enabled. And that is normal because the value for this field is only going to get emitted and reach the form value whenever we submit the form. And we have disabled the button here in order to prevent invalid form submissions. So in order to see this ng update on submit in action, we are going to have to temporarily go back here to our program and remove this condition here that was disabling here our submit button. Let's try this out now. We are going to switch here to our login form. Let's go ahead and let's type in here a valid email and let's type in a valid password. Now take a look at what happens when we click on login and we submit the form. As we can see, only at this moment we got this console.log statement here in our output. So the ng model directive applied here to the email field only emitted a new ng model change event whenever we actually submitted the form. And we can see here that the form submission includes the values for both fields. Let's now go back to our program and see what other options we have available here for ng model options. Before anything else, let's also add here again the disabled condition here to our form button. Let's then learn what other options we have available for the ng model directive.